it's amazing how a few simple lighting tricks can transform your studio from looking like this to looking more like this. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to light your home studio using one awesome video light and also give you some other options if you wanna take things to the next level. Check it out. Three, two, one. Hey guys, what's going on? Blaze here with Moves Media. For those of you that don't know me, I have a media company based here in Vancouver, Canada, and we do all kinds of professional video productions. Now, when we're lighting a professional video, we're spending over a thousand dollars in lighting just to rent the lights for a day to make a pre professional shoot look really good. Now, this is really complicated, it's really detailed, and none of it you really need to know because lighting a home studio could actually be really, really simple. In your home studio, you basically need to work with the space you have, and that's where the Godex LED key light really shines. Now, you'll probably see a lot of advice on YouTube for people saying you need a lot of depth behind you in your background to get that bokeh blurred effect, and when it comes to lighting, it's also really helpful to have a really large lighting source because the larger your lighting source, the softer the light's gonna be. So when it comes to video lighting, the first thing you're gonna be figuring out is your key light. And basically, your key light is the main light that's gonna be lighting your subject. A really basic place to start when it comes to key lights is putting the light 45 degrees from camera and starting there, seeing how it looks, and adjusting the light from there. The bigger the light, the softer it's gonna look, so it's always nice to have a nice big light source for your key light. It's also a great trick to bring it as close to the subject as possible, but obviously outside of your camera frame because that is gonna create a bigger light source compared to where your subject is in the frame. I'm actually getting this light side of my face and then this dark side of my face, so there's almost a line down my face with the shadow side and the light side. And that's just a really uh, cinematic tool to add some more depth to your face, some perspective, and it makes it look a little more unique. Um, what a lot of amateur uh, videographers or filmmakers do is they're just gonna make the scene really bright. And I actually used to use my Aperture 300D, which I have off to the side. It's actually acting as a fill light, um, but I'll just brighten that up for you and show you. I mean, this is a really soft light because what I'm doing is I'm actually bouncing my Aperture 300D off my wall and my white roof, and that's just dispersing the light in a nice soft format. So I'm getting this kind of big bright space that looks pretty good, but it's not very cinematic. And as you'll see if I shut that off, all of a sudden now I've got more depth, I've got more character, and it just looks more professional when you're looking at the video. I did wanna mention that if you're lighting videos, bouncing your light off a white wall is a great trick to soften your light. If you shine a light directly at yourself, there's gonna be this huge shadow on the opposite side of the light. Um, but if you bounce it off a roof or a wall or any kind of white big surface, then you'll just get a nice softer look. So a really basic principle, bounce it off a wall, you're gonna get that bright, soft light that's gonna look okay for any kind of amateur video. Now, if you're taking your video to the next level and you're getting something like the Godex Key Light LED, then it's great for a few different reasons. And the first for me, what I love is it has this desk attachment. So this one I'm able to mount on the side of my desk. I can get it really close to my face. Um, it's also really large. So again, larger the light source, the softer the light. So it's nice and big. Um, it's nice and close for that extra softness. And it's also dimmable. So a dimmable light can give you the maximum control as to how much light you're gonna need. And the added bonus with the Godex LED is it's bicolor. So if you are needing to adjust the color temperature depending on your room, depending if it's daylight or you have some tungsten lights in the background, you can do that with the Godex Key Light LED. And that's basically the key starting point for your key light. And honestly, if you wanted to stop there, you could probably create a relatively cinematic look with just your key light 45 degrees off of your camera and leaving it there. Now, in this studio, I'm cheating a bit because I have a few other things going on. So if you do wanna take your lighting up a small notch, then stay tuned and let me walk you through what else I have going on in my studio. Okay, so the second light that I'm actually using, and you can do this with a number of different lights, and you don't even actually need a light necessarily, and, and that's a fill light. So that main light that I was showing you earlier that's su that I can make super bright and just fill the whole space and bouncing off the wall, that is actually acting as my fill light. So I'm bringing that right down to actually the lowest setting. This is the Aperture 300D, and you can see that's just filling in a little bit of the shadows uh, around the outside 
of the um, scene, as well as a little bit on my, which side is it, my shadow side, um, you can see is a little bit of fill there. Now, if you want a less, uh, less harsh or less contrasty um, light side and dark side, you can also use something like a, just a white chloroplast sheet. And what you'll see is if I just hold it up and basically my key light is reflecting off of this and I can put this slightly out of frame but I'll just put it here so you can see, is that's filling in a lot of that shadow. Um, so you can just get some kind of big white foam chloroplast board and use it as a bounce uh, and then fill in that dark side to have it a little bit, a little bit less dark. Now, alternatively, you can use something like what I'm using and pull up that fill light as bright or as dark as you want it just to fill in that other side of the face. So the other light that I have working for me is just a background light. And that's a light placed right behind me, just shining directly onto my background. So it's lighting up the background. Now, sometimes I maybe won't use this or you don't necessarily need it. I'll show you what it looks like. You don't really see the background as much, but I have this mural wall that I created and I wanna showcase it in my video. So I like having the background light for that reason, it just shows it off behind me, adds some separation between me and the background and looks pretty good on camera. Another lighting source that uh, videographers or DOPs will recommend is having a hair light or rim light. And I don't actually have that going on in my scene right here. What a hair light or rim light is, is something that's gonna be 45 degrees opposite side of your key light shining back towards you. And it's gonna add kind of like a halo. Picture if you're uh, silhouetted on a beautiful sunset, um, if you're standing behind that subject who is silhouetted uh, with the sunset, uh, they're gonna have almost like a glow around them. That's kind of what a rim light is doing. It separates you from the background. And honestly, in a lot of these YouTube studios that you're probably working with, it's a pretty small space. It's another expense. It's super annoying. And I'd say the value is maybe a five to 10% increase in production value. If you dial in your key light, your fill light, your background light, you're probably doing a good enough job as to what you need. So hair light or rim light option for you to use, but I don't necessarily think it's a necessity for YouTube studio shooting. The other thing that I have going on here are my practical lights. And these are just lights that you actually see in your scene. So what I have is just this small aperture LED, which I'll link in the video description below. And it's actually by color so I can change the color. And I just have it placed facing this mug slash this wall and it's creating a little bit of color contrast with some complementary colors, some green, some orange on this side, and just adds for a little bit of flavor in my studio. Now you can do this with just regular lights. You can turn a lamp on next to your desk, something to just add a bit of um, atmosphere to your actual scene. So a practical light is a light actually in your scene that viewers can see. One problem that a lot of people run into that I wanted to put out there is light bouncing off of walls. Now, a lot of people work in small spaces with white walls, and unfortunately what's gonna happen is if you have a key light, doesn't matter where it is or where it's pointing, it's probably gonna bounce off the other walls and fill in other areas that you don't necessarily want. Now, in my studio, I actually happen to have this big black cabinet, which I did strategically place there, which acts as a negative fill. And what a negative fill is, is just blocking light from bouncing off of a white surface. So anything black, preferably matte, or you can use a black sheet or black paper, is gonna just stop light from bouncing. So if I didn't have this cabinet here, it would kind of act similar to how a um, chloroplast fill sheet or a fill light acts is, it's gonna just fill in that dark side of the face, but depending on how bright it is, how small your room is, it could do um, more damage than good to what you want your scene to look like. So if you do run into a situation where you don't want light bouncing from one wall back onto you or back onto your subject, then throw up a black sheet and it's gonna solve that problem for you pretty quick. If you guys do want a bigger rundown of what expensive versus cheap lighting setups look like, I'm gonna to link to a video in the description below. So another one I did breaking down how we light our the $50,000 video setups versus our YouTube studio setups. Um, so check that out. It might be interesting for you to add some more knowledge that I may have not disclosed in this video. If you guys are looking for a great key light, I do highly recommend the Godex LED key light. It's amazing how versatile it is. I love that you can put it on the table, mount it to the table. You can also put it on a regular light stand if you wanted to, but it's nice to have that flexibility. Um, it's linked in the video description below. Uh, it is an affiliate link, so it does help my channel if you guys do purchase it from that link. So I thank you in advance for anyone who's considering buying that light and uses that link. 
So I wanted to give a shout out to Matthew who commented on my last video wondering why I have so few subscribers and it really helps just taking the time to throw a comment down, hitting the like button, and especially subscribing to the channel. Guys like me who are still trying to work on our YouTube journey and have a long way to go, uh, we love getting feedback from you guys. So if you have anything you wanna hear, anything you liked about the video, if you do take the time, put it in the comment section below. It's super helpful for the channel and really interesting to me to see who my subscribers or my viewers are and who's watching my content. So that's it for me guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, smash that like button, consider subscribing and stay tuned for more videos. I got a ton of content planned, a ton of content on the way and hopefully helping you guys out in your video journey, making your videos look more professional. That's it for me. Peace.